Welcome to the second video lecture of Module 5, where we look at decentralization and economic development. The first video lecture revisited a theme from the first part of the course, the differences and similarities between federalism and decentralization, and the arrival of uh, this twin concept in Africa in the 1990s. Notwithstanding its ability to provide self-rule uh, to what we might call minorities within minorities within regional states, most of the first video lecture was on the more technical role as well as the technical image or profile of decentralization both within federations as well as within constitutionally unitary states. We also talked about the tendency to play down the political side of things and to play up the technical. The best reflection of this tendency we see in economics. Federalism exists in the three big states of sub-Saharan Africa, Ethiopia, South Africa and Nigeria. But decentralization exists in all, including the federal ones where the local government sits below regional states. But since the introduction of decentralization in the 1990s, two important things have also happened. These complicate our diagnosis of the workings of decentralization especially when it comes to evaluating the impact of decentralization on economic development and economic growth. We have two phenomena unfolding in the wake of the introduction of decentralization. The, uh, the first one is the market-driven African economic boom, often dubbed Africa Rising, and the second one is the state-driven development strategy known as the developmental state. African economies have boomed in the last decade, bringing in unprecedented levels of economic growth while putting much of the Northern Hemisphere to shame. Some call this Africa rising. And remarkably, African economic growth is no longer limited to export of natural resources like gold, diamonds, oil and gas, which are likely to be susceptible to fluctuations in price and indeed have fallen prey to these fluctuations in the past, creating booms and busts. This time, economic growth in Africa includes more than natural resources. Agriculture, manufacturing, service industries have all uh, been growing. Transportation and communication infrastructural projects connect remote parts of the countries. Urbanization and modernization go hand in hand. Over the last few years, most sub-Saharan economies have had growth rates of 6, 7, 8 percent and above. Quite a few African countries are oil producers, yet the dramatic fall of oil prices of the last year has not dented the growth rates. During 2004, oil prices had dropped by 60%, yet economic analysts are still quite bullish about Africa's economic future. Nor has the slowdown of the Chinese economy, the biggest consumer of African natural resources, has dented African growth rates. The persistence of healthy growth rates suggests African economies are becoming structurally diverse and vibrant. Africa rising owes its origins to the confluence of a number of broad factors, economic and political. It is also important to note the existence of a feedback process here, and that is, once economic growth and confidence grow in a country, this has a tendency to feed into a positive outlook for the neighbours. International investors then gain the confidence to enter into markets they had uh, probably considered risky uh, a little while back. Now, to be fair, we also have to factor in the 2008 financial crisis that hit the northern economies and continue to hold Europe back in its wake. In times of uncertainty, a lot of the mobile capital left the troubled northern economies in search of safer investments. And all this happened to coincide with the African economic boom. It also happened to follow the decentralization reforms of the 1990s. So this complicates the clear evaluation of decentralization scorecard. Economic growth has a complex and multifaceted relationship with decentralization, but this is not a simple and linear causal relationship in the form of decentralization causes economic growth. That is not the case. What made the democratic reforms introducing decentralization, among other things, uh, possible in the 1990s had also laid down the foundations for economic growth in the following decade. 
But not everywhere in Africa has economic growth been a market-driven one with foreign direct investment. While Africa Rising was taking place, some African countries wanted to couple their market-driven economic development strategies with a state-driven one. The notion of the developmental state is closer to socialist ideas on development than it is the case with the market-driven development policies international organizations like the World Bank or IMF endorse and support. In order to combat the persistent economic problems that are too big for local and regional levels of government, the developmental state assumes nationwide responsibility. This is especially the case with developmental infrastructure responsibilities in peripheral poorer regions. Large-scale infrastructure projects, more often than not, are initiated and led by the central government. This, of course, strengthens the central government and hence the dominant political party, of course at the expense of regional states and local government. Particularly in federal countries, but also to a certain extent in unitary but decentralized ones, this is an imposition of a different who does what than the one that exists between central, regional and local government. In this who does what, there is only one who, and that is the center. Consequently, policies adopted according to the logic of developmental state could easily end up circumventing the constitutional division of responsibilities between the centre and the regional states and the local governments. Unprecedented levels of economic growth of the last 10 years has created patterns that cannot fully be captured through the traditional thinking on development and decentralization. More scholarly research has to be done in order to ascertain how much a role decentralization has had on the African economic boom. But at this point, there is also a need for a warning on this Africa rising. Despite the remarkable rates of economic growth and democratic reform, we should be careful not to paint an unduly rosy picture here. Ethnic conflict, political violence, inequality and corruption continue to poison African politics. Legacies of colonialism now meet new forms of exploitation and injustice. An aspirational middle class coexists with persistent and widespread poverty. Booming African cities also have booming slums without sanitation, running water or any other public service. Failures in service delivery hit the most vulnerable segments of the society. Infrastructural and demographic decay afflicts rural regions that have not been part of the economic boom. There is a lot to be done in terms of education, health, uh, women's rights, persistent inequality and corruption also prevents many countries from fully realizing their economic potential. In some countries, close to half of the economically active population is unemployed. It is not all economics, after all. Decentralization has consequences, some of it unintended, that require casting a wider net for analysis. And that's going to be the topic for our next video, number three. See you then.